morning, everyone. I'm John Sandbach, and I'm the executive director of the National Sunflower Association. And I'm going to speak about our NSA priorities as far as research and just give you an idea of some of the projects we've recently funded. Um, first off, I just kind of wanted to show you, this is the Sunflower Research Team. You know, when you look at these folks that are standing in the field here, these are the ARS scientists and their tech staff. Uh, when you look at these people, they're, they're the ones who do that basic building blocks, that initial research, some of that, that groundbreaking research when it comes to traits or agronomic benefits to the crop. Um, we also, after that, work with a lot of applied research. And what we try to do with all of our research is we try to spread it out across the country. Uh, there could be instances where, you know, we have a weather phenomenon or something where you could lose a year's worth of data. So we work with NDSU, SDSU, Colorado State, K-State, and Texas A&M on, on a lot of the research projects that we do have. As far as priorities, you know, what we do is we, we have a group of research committee members. This represents producers, industry members, researchers, um, and private industry. And uh, what we break our research down is the five key research areas. This is in disease, insects, uh, production issues, weed control, and then product utilization. But for the disease part of our research priorities, our number one disease right now that we're working on is homopsis. Um, it's, it's a disease very prevalent in the Dakotas, North and South Dakota, uh, Minnesota, especially Northwest Minnesota. Um, it's right now probably our number one disease that we're working on as a group. Uh, we also continue to work on sclerotinia. You saw Dr. Vunch's research on, on head rot. Um, we're also working on basal stock rot, some other things. Um, even simple diseases such as rust or donny mildew, there are also issues that we, we constantly need to stay ahead of these diseases because as you know, nature adapts and um, these diseases need to be controlled in, in some way that we can overcome that. Um, when you look at priorities on the insect side, um, we're always looking for evaluation of different IPM strategies, whether that be scouting, trapping, um, different thresholds, um, using different modes of action, whether that be you know, cultural, biological, whatever. Um, you know, at all the major sunflower insect pests, whether it be head moth, banded sunflower moth, seed weevil, ligus, uh, decti stem borer, and wireworm. Um, you know, as, as Jan had mentioned, we're, we're losing chlorpyrifos. One of the issues and one of the things that we'll be working on is trying to find new chemistry that, that's going to be able to replace that and work with that because we realize that pyrethroids are working well now in most cases, but we can't depend on that long term and we'll, we'll be looking for new chemistry. Um, also, we're also screening new um, you know, germ plasma to try to find insecticide resistance um, in, in these flowers, okay. trying to find out the secondary benefits of pollinators and native bees and sunflowers. For production issues, we continue to work on, on blackbirds. Um, blackbirds are something that, you know, obviously I wish I could say that, uh, you know, we, uh, we've, we've solved that issue, but it's not something that we have, but we are continuing to work on that, uh, working with partners at NDSU and, and USDA. Um, also looking at factors to, related to achieving an adequate plant stand, uh, methods or techniques to apply fungicide, obviously with more use of ground rigs, things like that you know, that, that's an area that we continue to want to do research in. I'm also looking to improve sunflower genetics using SNPs and other genomic tools. And is, it was what Hans showed you today, some of the, the, you know, the new hybrids that are out there or the experimentals. You can see the direct benefit of using this new technology and the advancements that have been made in the crop. Um, and then also just, we're looking at other emerging issues um, that are out there for sunflower that, that can help make the crop more profitable. On the weed side, we're always looking for new chemicals, you know, new compounds, whether they be experimental, especially for herbicides, uh, for potential use in sunflower. Anytime that, that a product is labeled for soybean or other broadleaf crops, you know, I'm always after trying to find that chemical for sunflower to make sure we can do that. Um, obviously, weed control is huge. And so we're also looking at older and newer chemistries, especially, you know, as, as Joe had mentioned, some of the different weeds that, you know, are becoming more of an issue. Um, but there again, also trying to find new registered desiccants also for active ingredients to try to get the crop harvested earlier. Um, and then something else that we just started a couple of years ago was looking at fall applied herbicide versus the current spring program, um, just to reduce that spring emerging in population. As I mentioned on disease, here's some of the projects that we funded for Fomopsis. Uh, what we're looking at is using you know, various fungicides to try to manage the disease, but then we're also looking at it from a stage as far as genetic development. 
Um, Donny Mildew is something else that we continue to do, and that is the virulence of it. You know, we have some very good seed treatments right now, but one of the things that we don't want to have happen is that the disease would overcome those seed treatments. So we just want to keep track of where we're at with virulence so that we can continue to be developing new products. Um, rust is another one because he, it's, it's a simpler disease to control. Um, and it's easy, easier to breed for, but there again, you know, we really want to enhance that resistance, especially at confection sunflower. And then also just looking at, you know, the investigating the impact of diseases and associated factors with yield, and just to try to find ways that make the crop more profitable. The sclerotinia, uh, most of our, all these projects are funded through the National Sclerotinia Initiative. And that's, that's a consortium of, of five commodity organizations, be sunflower, soybean, canola, dry bean, and pea and lentil. Um, we work together to get federal funds for this program. Um, what we're working on here is identifying markers to facilitate uh, marker-assisted breeding as far as head rock and basal stot rock. Um, also looking at different uh, identifiers for oxalic acid that shows tolerance in the germplasm to incorporate that into new sunflower resources, especially to enhance basal stock rot resistance. And then something else is just looking at the interaction between the soil bacteria and sclerotinia and just trying to find if there's any kind of biocontrol measures that we can do for seed coatings to improve soil health to, reserve, to reduce the sclerotinia impact. On the insect side, you've seen Dan's research. Um, obviously, we're, we're trying to find new insecticides for wireworm control. The borophanolide product looks very promising for killing wireworms. Um, it's been a long time since we've had any kind of a product that has been able to do that. Um, and so that looks very promising and we're very excited about that. Obviously, you know, she had also mentioned with red sunflower seed weevil, the work she's doing there along with Adam Varenhorst in South Dakota. Um, and just overall using biology and different cultural practices. Is there a time we could plant, you know, the crop even earlier that would help control against the, and help in the control of sunflower seed weevils? For research projects on the production side, we're looking at um, integrating cover crops, you know, and residual herbicides to control glyphosate resistant weeds. Um, plant spacing, as Hans mentioned, that, that's very important it, issue, obviously, as far as yield. And so we're looking at things like seed emergence and, and how it works as skips and doubles and gaps in the field. Um, something else and, and that we're, we're working on a lot is, is with high oleic oils. You know, the trend in the industry right now for oils is to go to a higher monounsaturated fat and a lower saturated fat. So a lot of that is just finding what are mapping the modifiers for high oleic and how do we incorporate that in, into hybrids and make that um, you know, more of a, a viable situation for high oleic sunflower to continue to have higher monounsaturated levels and lower saturates. Um, as I had mentioned, we continue to work on, on blackbirds. And I think an exciting area um, that we're working on right now is using drones, uh, whether that be for hazing the birds. But I think one of the most promising things that I've seen is using a, a spraying drone to actually spray repellent on blackbirds and sunflower fields. And there were some of the initial results of that USDA and NDSU are the lead agencies on this. Um, it's not something currently that is allowed to be done. Obviously you can spray bird repellent on the crop, but it's not purposefully sprayed on, on the birds themselves. But so if this does prove, you know, to have some efficacy, well, it would obviously be a, a, something that we would want to try to change the label. So that this could be allowed practice. Um, the last area is in product utilization. And one of the things we're always looking for is trying to find more value in the crop, in, in the seed, whether it be micronutrients or various things on both um, on the seed side, as far as, for example, for confectionery sunflower, but then also on the meal side. And anytime you can add more value or make seed or the byproducts more valuable, it's going to be able to increase that price to producers at the crush plant or at the processing plant. And so it's an area that we've just started a couple of years ago, but uh, continue to look at that increasing in the future. And the last thing I'd like to leave you with um, is you're, there's a lot of great speakers today that have, you know, given, uh, you know, give you some great information. But if you really need more information, well, I would suggest going to our website. Um, it's at www.sunflarenSA.com. Um, on our website, we update the daily prices. Uh, there's yield trial data, just not just from North Dakota, but from various states. Um, you can see the labeled pesticides that are available for use in sunflower. Um, we, we saw but there were production manuals um, in North Dakota and South Dakota. We have one also for the High Plains region um, and in also for, for Manitoba um, on our website uh, that would give a lot of good information to producers. 
Uh, we have different pictures on just the different pests um, that are available. Um, you know, as far as the ones that might affect the crop, uh, there's an archive of our magazine articles from as far back as, as I can think. And also weekly news. We do a weekly newsletter, which you can sign up for on e-publications um, and you, you'll be able to access that on a daily basis. Um, and then also supply and demand tables. And with that, I just thank everybody for being on today and uh, good to see so many people.